Hey, welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another Retro Shiz look back at the past, and today we're heading all the way back to 1994 slash, give or take, 1995, for a look at the Toy Biz from their Spider-Man, the animated series toy line, the Daily Bugle playset. I know a lot of you have been waiting on this one, as have I, but that artwork on the box is glorious. Dr. Octopus looking armed and dangerous, along with... The Hobgoblin throwing pumpkin bombs and apparently gargoyles. Not Bruce the gargoyle though. And then you have Venom. Not reds and blues, but he still looks equally as menacing with Spider-Man right there on the front escaping all the carnage happening behind him. What a glorious piece of art for a toy playset, right? Now, on the sides of the box, equally as awesome, gorgeous coloring, nice photos. You even get one side that'll tell you every single thing in this box like a working water tower, ooze base, grabbing tentacle, they got it all, right? And on the back side, equally as awesome because you got brand new photos of the awesome toy you're about to experience along with, again, everything that you could expect to do with this Daily Bugle playset, along with every other exciting Spider-Man product you could collect from the vehicles to the figures to the plushes to the talking ones. You get the idea. Don't forget to call that Toy Biz customer service number because you got Spider-Man figures to find. But in the meantime, this is going to be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a retro shiz look back at the 1994-1995 Spider-Man, the animated series, the Daily Bugle playset by Toy Biz. Now, in doing all these Toy Biz videos over the years, especially for Spidey Animated, never once did I look at the Superheroes Collector's Guide, which this Daily Bugle playset did come with. These were always so much fun to read and look at and plan ahead for the next figures that you would be looking for in store. But for the five inch action figures, and notice how a lot of these were prototypes, right? Paint masters that Heavily differentiated from the figures that you got, especially that taller 10-inch deluxe lizard right there. Look at the face on that guy, but equally as awesome. You have the three attack vehicles in one with the Tri-Spider Slayer. Black Widow, Tarantula, Scorpion. That was a fun video to make. You can check it out now if you'd like. But what a group of figures, right? But then, lo and behold, right center square, you have the Daily Bugle from the world of Spider-Man, right? So... Everything you see here, more or less, is what you're going to be getting in the box. It didn't really differentiate, much like the later Crime Central playset, if you saw my video on that. But it's, again, the nostalgic awesomeness that these booklets bring, right? You got the Hobgoblin's Wing Bomber, or you could say the Green Goblin's Wing Bomber as well, along with Smice Battle Chair Attack Vehicle. Both of those excellent additions to any Spider-Man Toy Biz collection. And to round it off on the back, well, we might cover these eventually. Spider-Man Pocket Comics, huh? Not too shabby. Let me know if you'd like to see me do those. Web of Steel? I don't know about those, though. Those <laughs> never really did much for me. But hey, never say never. But I did like the Spider-Man projectors, of which I have a Venom video up now. But I'm looking to get more of those. And the plush Spidey... I distinctly remember those in the box. That kid's having a blast with that Spider-Man. You got the giant web-talking Spider-Man. I do have him, although the electronics aren't too shabby no more. And you got Venom dress-up, Spider-Man dress-up. Like I said, uh, this was quite the booklets to have as a kid. But we're here to put together a Daily Bugle action playset, right? <laughs> this reads like an Ikea instruction manual from hell. I'm not going to joke, but... As many detailed instructions as you have, well, if you do it correctly, and I'm just going to tell you right now, if you are buying this brand new for whatever reason, please take your time. Everything does fit eventually, but don't force anything, don't bend anything. Yeah, it's it's quite the playset to put together, one that would never fly in this day and age, unless it was some sort of crowdfunder, right? But you can read all about Spidey's modular world right here. Very, very cool. Love reading all these old copy and paragraphs and everything else. They don't do that enough anymore, right? Non-stop Spider-Man action adventures. Spider-Man's action playset. Again, all the diagrams are really detailed out. I gotta give it to whoever designed this. 
my hat's off to you for that, right? And then the final page, the diagram for the Venom building and the Dr. Octopus building, which we will be discussing in full detail. But again, very, very technical, very cool. I actually really love the way that this looks. I would even mind seeing this framed somewhere on my wall, right? But you got the glob, the clothes, the open, the spigot, you get the whole idea. You're almost there, right? You've almost put everything together. You're almost ready for action. But wait a minute. Uh, did you just say something about a Venom Glob? Well, I did. <laughs> this is the Venom Glob, and it was basically goop, right? Slime. But unfortunately, after all these years, we were never able to find a host for this symbiote. So he has dried out, wilted, Gonzo, but hey, at least the packaging still exists and I can prominently put that on display along with this little top right here That was when you opened it you could reseal the venom glob. So that's a nice touch right there toy biz. I appreciate that Equally as awesome they, again. They don't do that kind of stuff anymore, but we're ready for action because wanted spider-man reward for his capture after you've spent well, let's give it take 30 45 minutes you're gonna have one heck of a display playset. One that I will tell you, as a kid, as I remember, uh, got one of these from a garage sale years ago. By no means was it complete. This one is, however, but it's just amazing to have this now as an adult collector, to have a display. All my Toy Biz, Spider-Man, the animated series figures, the Daily Bugle prominently displayed with all the different accessories, all the different figures, just take it all in right there. That, that is a playset right there. A very displayable playset. When it comes to playing with it, let's talk about that. So we have the Daily Bugle playset with a dumpster. And it did come with a sticker sheet, which you could place all the stickers anywhere you want. I'm very appreciative that the prior owner of this chose to put all the stickers all over the dumpster and not the actual playset itself. But you get the idea. Solid blue plastic, very simplistic, has a little handle right there. And it opens and closes by which you're supposed to put a lot of goop in there and place Venom or Spider-Man, right? So that is awesome to see. Now, on the sides, as this was a modular building, you could display it however you'd like. And you can see there's little tabs, there's little holes every which way. And in certain places, yeah, you could maximize or minimize your playset. But with Doc Ock's lair right here, Tavius' seafood, you got Dr. Octopus tentacle coming through the wall and the woodwork, lots of graffiti, everything's nailed shut. From the time I've spent there, yeah, that's definitely New York City. But on the flip side, you get Dr. Octopus's laboratory and that's actually a very cool display it was a giant sticker gorgeous artwork kind of sort of neogenic recombinatory right but those are all laser blasters and whatnot kind of sort of the rocket test firing lab from the episode of dr octopus but right here at the top you had this little crank and it spun this little saw blade and it really didn't do much except for that but truth be told you're supposed to jam spider-man in there and he gets ripped to pieces but where that kind of fails you have this giant dr octopus tentacle claw and it has a little jaw mouth right there which you could pinch spider-man and toss him around the play set and for that as simple as it was it totally works and in playing with this as a kid yeah i appreciated it i didn't have the little spinny top thing so i didn't know what that was at the time but it definitely had this which you could say is an air duct system for any type of new york facility along with the brock pest control area right there's a hand sticking out of the window right there god knows what venom did to him in there but i like all the subtle little tongue and cheek jabs right that's pretty cool and up top you had a bit of a water tower right or a slime tower ah, very cool so what you would do is you'd put the venom goo in there right and then you would use this part to push it down the goo would travel through right there and you would twist the little knob open or shut and, and the goo would come out but slamming uh, the goo down with the little yellow piece yeah that would help it to uh, achieve 
uh, actually flowing out a little bit better, right? And right here, you have more of a backdrop of a sewer system. But I would honestly tell you that's more along the lines of the lair of the lizard, right? But I do like the forced perspective. I totally appreciate that. Very cool. And like I said, modular in many ways. Some things worked. You could really play around with it at your leisure. But for the most part, yes, that's supposed to go right there. Along with the giant blue dumpster. And like I said, you were supposed to put this underneath. You could put Venom or Spider-Man in the dumpster and then crank open the slime canister and boom, it would cover your character in the slime, right? All kids love the slime. But up top, you had a little bit more going on. A little bit more Spider-Man action, truth be told. Now, you do have these gargoyle type things right and they would hang off the sides of the building kind of sort of reminds you of the hobgoblins wing glider right very many ways very simplistic very much just a bruce the gargoyle for the daily bugle building right in so many ways and you had two of those of which you had fix on the sides at the top now right here in the middle you had this device which was essentially a spider-man winch more or less right you could pull out the string, right? And then you had a button on the back, which would then allow you to pull Spider-Man up whenever you wanted to. Very cool, right? I love that. It still works to this day, which I am very happy about, right? It's always nice to have old toys that work, but it would simply just place right in there, or you could move it around wherever you'd like. Now, right behind that web swinging deal, you have the Daily Bugle sign, along with some elevator doors, which more or less resembled the Daily Bugle building from the animated series. And up top, you had a searchlight. And I've always thought, how cool would that have been if that was a real working searchlight, right? And of course, every once in a while, this beyond janky playset, the doors may fall open <laughs> just like that. As hard as you may try to fit all of these things together for this playset, you're gonna get some jank. And take special note of this trap door, more on that in just a few. Now over on this side, you have a bit of a crane system. And again, very simplistic, it's all yellow, all plastic, but it definitely works in bringing the city of New York, the Daily Bugle, to life. And I really appreciate that, plus, as I'll show you later, it kind of works with a specific episode of Spidey Animated. Now, you also have this giant red beam girder, right? And that's pretty cool because you could have Spider-Man, Venom, Dr. Octopus hanging off of it. And again, as modular as this playset is, you can really find new and exciting ways to display this. And or if you're a kid back in 1994, 95, yeah, you can find new and exciting ways to play with it. Now... Right here, you could essentially asphyx these two side buildings together and you would have a different sort of structure to play with. So again, very modular, very fun, but honestly, in displayability purposes, I think it works best just to clip the yellow crane onto the red girder and stick it onto the sidewall. But again, there really is no right or wrong way for display. Now, the best aspects of this playset, though, even though it's cardboard and plastic, the artwork. The artwork gives it this timeless quality to it. Sure, it's the 90s. Sure, there's some comic book looking spider slayers in there, but there is a payphone, right? When was the last time you saw one of those? There's steam coming out of the vents, manhole covers, sewer covers, water covers, venom escapes newspapers, mail, daily bugle, potted plants, everything again in that force perspective. PP loves MJP. I wonder who they could be talking about there. There's even a dead bird. <laughs> you even got a really cool bench, Reed Daily Bugle, Spider Slayer, Chewing Gum, Venom Slime. You get the idea. Cracks in the concrete. That just really brings this all to life. Now, in all honesty, when displaying the figures, it's not gonna make a whole heck of a lot of sense, but hey, it's the whole visual design of it, right? Again, making for a great display. Now to go from front to back, here's a little bit of a different perspective for this Daily Bugle playset, one that not everybody gets to see. Everybody usually displays it from the front, but the backside has equally as gorgeous artwork, and especially in detailing the 
Living City of New York, presented beautifully here and including Spider-Man the Animated Series with a trip to inside the Daily Bugle offices. Now, it is a little bit of a mashup between animated and comic book, Carnage in New York, and then right here, Doc Octopus escapes from Spider-Man, all of it being very comic booky, right? But... Hey, doesn't detract from the fact that this is the animated series Daily Bugle. Just look at the animation. But I love that it's, again, that perspective, multi-tiers. You got J. Jonah Jameson arguing with Robbie Robertson back there. You have Betty Brant off to the side, right? Everything looks very cool. And I love that they have a water cooler. Again, a lot of things you just don't see anymore in office buildings. Everything has changed so drastically from these simpler times. And at the bottom level, we have the Daily Bugle printing press and all the different machines and making all the newspapers. That is a lot of fun. That is cool and quite the time capsule for this era. Not only of toys, but for just the ideal look of New York itself. With all the brick and all the fire escape ladders and the spider-man wanted posters i love this thing this is just a fantastic spread of everything that was spider-man the animated series in a very toyetic form down to this elevator right here <laughs> which opened up and hey you know if you didn't tell me that was an elevator I mean, I guess I would have figured it out, but we take our Spider-Man here. We're going to open up the door and place old Spidey, which, hey, there's plenty of room. We're going to shut the door on him. And basically, it's just move it yourself up these slats, right? So you have these giant yellow slats on either side. That's where the elevator will fit in. And I'm going to tell you, hold the entire place at itself when doing this because you don't want to knock it weird and see already the doors. <laughs> like I told you. It's got a little bit of jank to it. You gotta go easy. But at the very top, that's where you can unload Spider-Man. And on the front side, we're gonna open up the elevator doors. And I'm gonna tell you, pop the red thing off in advance. Because you will not be able to open the doors with that red thing as fixed. There's just not enough room at the top of the Daily Bugle, unfortunately. But you go ahead and grab your Spider-Man. And we're gonna put him right in front, right? He's ready to save the day. Or is he? Perhaps J. Jonah Jameson put this in, a la Mr. Burns, right? So you're going to see right here, there is a switch on the back of the Daily Bugle playset. And when you move it, it'll push this trap door mechanism. It's very simple. You just simply reset it with the button every single time you want to do it. And Spider-Man, whoever, can drop to their death three floors down. But it is a lot of fun. Not going to joke. It's fun to see Spider-Man just horribly fall through the trap door. My God, and to see it from different angles, he might not always go through. And likewise, to show you the whole spider web winch sort of deal. Now, it has no problem pulling itself up minus a figure, but in actually is fixing a Spider-Man, yeah, you know, it'll kind of pull him up halfway, right? It's a little bit too heavy or the pulley system has just aged. Either one. But right here, with the whole gargoyle system, it's meant to be that, sure, Hobgoblin just hurled a pumpkin bomb at Spider-Man. He narrowly jumped out of the way. An explosion happened. It knocked off a piece of the Daily Bugle, and Spider-Man landed right on the Daily Bugle bench. Now, to go on with the whole crane system. And this is where my spider senses kicked in, and I was like, I know what this is from. Because you have to think about the first couple episodes, the first season, with the Black Widow. And in that second parter for the return of the Spider Slayers, he just slammed that Black Widow right into that wall and knocked it out until Smythe reactivated it. And as such, perhaps, and I was thinking, well, then that's probably why the dumpster has a handle. You can then use the yellow crane to pick this up and move it around much like New York City, with Dr. Otto Octavius' lab. It's very simple. It gives you a little bit of a display. I wouldn't say that the fun factor is there for the kiddos. Perhaps if there was something to be attached to then shred Spider-Man, right? Something like that, because it kind of tickles him. <laughs> but regardless, you have this big old Dr. Octopus tentacle, and that was actually a lot of fun, which... Actually, you could pinch onto Spider-Man, his face and whatnot, and throw him around the playset. So for that, very appreciative. Over on the Venom side of things, like I said, I think the goo, sure, that can be applied to Venom. And I get why they went with Venom, 
But let's be honest, with the whole playset and the sewers, that'd be more geared for the lizard, especially the slime, right? And if Ghostbusters 2 has taught us anything, yeah, there's plenty of slime in the underground sewer systems of New York. But one character that I really think should have been included with this playset, right? You always got to put a figure to just further entice, right? Would have been J. Jonah Jameson, who came out in a later Spider-Man, the animated series box set. But there you go. That's the complete nature right there and ready to just put all your figures at your leisure and really build out your amazing Toy Biz Spidey animated diorama. And flying in low on a wing glider, ready to assassinate the Kingpin, straight into the Daily Bugle, we have Scorpion and J. Jonah Jameson because, well, he just turned Mag Gargan into the Scorpion along with Farley Stillwell. Madam Webb is overseeing everything from later seasons, of course. Craven is on the hunt, trying to find Dr. Mariah Crawford. Wouldn't that be a cool figure? The Lizard, like I said, somewhere underground with a Neogenic Recombinator. Venom, well, somehow he made his way back from the portal of Dormammu. And I'd like to think that after his entanglement with Aunt Anna, the Punisher went on to bigger and better things. Chameleon just stole a kiss from Mary Jane Watson, which... If you think about it, it's all kinds of gross. The Tri-Spider Slayer has been reactivated and is now working with the Alien Spider Slayer. And Dr. Otto Octavius, well, he's up to no good as always. All the while, Spider-Man up top overseeing a semi-grateful city as long as J. Jonah Jameson stops publishing his newspaper. But there you have it. This gorgeous display for the Toy Biz Spider-Man the Animated Series Daily Bugle playset. So... That will wrap it up for my Retro Shiz look back at the 1994-1995 Spider-Man the Animated Series Daily Bugle playset. And again, to everyone out there who has watched all of my Retro Shiz videos for Spider-Man the Animated Series over the years, thank you very much. I have had an absolute blast showing off each and every wave, every vehicle, and now every single playset. But as much as I want to say, this is it. We're done. We're out of toys. We're out of everything that had to do with Spidey Animated. That's actually the beauty of Spider-Man the Animated Series. It's kind of sort of the gift that keeps on giving. Every once in a while, finding a new little tidbit, a new little toy to tackle. So rest assured, while this does sort of finalize the look of the Animated Series in terms of toy form... We are certainly not done, and I have a lot more coming, but just be patient, because I like to do things the right way. If these videos are going to exist for years and years, they have to be good, but I will make them good, and I'd love if you continue to watch, and for that, I just want to say an eternal thank you so much. So, you have heard my thoughts on everything here. And now I'm curious to know yours. So comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man the Animated Series. Look at him right there. Just all happy and content with himself. And so after all these years, I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember Spider-Man the Animated Series. While I never, ever want it to come back in any way, shape, or form via a cartoon, we still have lots more to discuss. And when we do... Let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.